الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الأتيبين الأنجبين بهم نتولى ومن أعدائهم نتبرع إلى الله اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا وذليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا Some questions were asked and inshallah the reply will be given. Just bear in your mind that the doubts that come across in our minds, especially the, the teenagers, the young, the youth, these doubts, they need to be answered. Unless we have these doubts cleared, we can never get to yaqeen. To get to yaqeen, there is a phase, which is this phase of shak, doubts, and everyone passes through that phase, age of 12, 13, 14, Sometimes it takes as much as 18 to 20 for a person to get to his destination which is the age of yaqeen where he, his doubts are almost cleared. So if there are doubts, approach the right person and get them cleared. <clears throat> Some questions were asked, one of them was as to why do we ask, why do we address Imam Hussain alayhi salam as Aba Abdullah? So, <clears throat> that is the question. In Arabic, we have kunniya, which is a title which is given to an individual. And this title, it's normally either because of his eldest son. If the son was Ali, for example, he will be named as Abu Ali. Or if the, name, uh, the eldest son was Abdullah, the father will be called Abu Abdullah. Sometimes, it's not the name of the son or the daughter as to which that title, that kunniya is given to that individual. For example, Abu Jahl, we have, father of ignorance. He didn't have a son called Jahl. But because that ignorance in that individual was such massive and huge and there wasn't any second to him, he was named as Abu Jahl. Or sometimes we find one of the names given to Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi salam, it's... <coughs> <laughs> it's Abu Turab doesn't mean that he had a son whose name was Turab because of that he was known as Abu Turab no Amir al muminin was tired in one, after one of these battles and he um, rested lied down to rest under a tree on that sand and when he woke up Rasulullah was present over there and he saw that this all this sand and sand and dust all over the face of Amir al muminin he says, Ali, you look so beautiful, so pretty with all this sand. And then Rasulullah calls him Abu Turab. Turab in Arabic means sand. So that title was given to him. Here, when we address Aba Abdullah and Hussein as Aba Abdullah, Abd means slave, servant. Abdullah means the servant of Allah. Now, the, had Aba Abdullah al Hussein not moved, had the sacrifice not taken place in Karbala, and had that bloodshed not taken place, or those companions who gave away their life, if that, was, that had not taken place, then no trace of Islam, no trace of servitude would have had remained. We read in Ziyarat, and in this Ziyarat Nahiyat al muqaddasa they say that it is because of Abu Abdullah and Hussein everything has remained, everything is safe. And that is, if he wasn't there, this servitude, this worship, this ibadah, this, um, that also would have had perished with all the teachings. So Imam, with his blood, he evolved servitude. He gave life to this uh, worship and that is these sincere servants of Allah they 
came into existence as a result of that Islam that was saved by Imam. So, Imam, he played a role in protecting deen as a result of which ibad, which means slaves and servants were increased. Whatever we have from among the servants, servitude, services, worship, credit of all of that goes to Imam Hussein. So someone who has brought so many clients towards Allah, so many customers, that is all these sincere people, all these majalis that are held worldwide and people they sit, and so many teachings, educations, masail are addressed and informed, all that is because of Abba Abdullah Hussain, because of his one sacrifice. We find that worldwide people, they sit, they learn. Result of that learning is that people, they become better people. Better people means Abdullah. So when we say Abba Abdullah, the father of all the slaves of Allah. That is the title that is given to Abba Abdullah Husayni alayhi salam. That's one. <coughs> the second question was regarding the hadith that we have. It says, Husaynun minni wa ana min Husayn. That Husayn is from me. And I am from Husayn. In this hadith also the question is that the lineage of Abba Abdullah it starts from the Prophet. So first part of the hadith, it's understood. Husaynun minni. Husayn is from me. Now what about wa ana min Husayn? It doesn't work that way because Rasulullah has to come into existence first. His lineage passes. Grandson Hussein comes into existence and then he says that Husaynun minni. Hussein is from me. Now in the reverse form when he says that wa ana min Husayn, I am from Husayn, in what aspect? It's the same reply that, that is as a result of that sacrifice which Abu Abdullah al Hussein gave and creation of that many people, ibad, servitude, services, servants, slaves, which resulted in the Prophet who was at the brink of a collapse and that is by if the Imam had not given that sacrifice, Islam was in danger. It means that the Prophet would have been forgotten. Imam Ali would have been forgotten. Someone who revived and gave life to Islam and all the teachings was Hussein. So the revival of the Prophet was due to the sacrifice given by Hussein. So when he says, Wa ana min Hussein, it's because of that sacrifice which Hussein gave, and he gave life to me because of that sacrifice. So Hussein on minni, it's from me, wa ana min Hussein, that is what is mentioned in this hadith by the Prophet. And this hadith also has been quoted by both the um, schools of thought, the Sunnis and the Shias. The other hadith which we mentioned the other day, it said that the Prophet says that from this dunya of yours, I love three things. First, it's the women, fragrance, and then he says that وَقُرَّةُ aini as salat, The delight of my eyes, it's prayers. We talked about fragrance, it was mentioned. The second thing which Prophet mentions over here, it's that he says, I like from this dunya of yours, the women. That is, I love from this world of yours, the women. That is, I hate to live without a spouse. Emphasis over here in this hadith is that the worst of the dead of my nation buried are those who are singles. So being single, it's hated by Rasulullah. Inni ubahi bikum al umam in that hadith which we recite when the wedlock is being recited, says that Rasulullah says that I will be proud of my nation in the hereafter, even if it's a stillborn baby. Uh, salawat from this side. Uh, even if it's a stillborn baby, Rasulullah says, I'll be proud because of that nation. So, when he says that he likes women, meaning that he hates to be single. So every person in this entire creation has to be married 
says that shiraru ummati uzabha that the worst the evil of of my nation are those who are singles that is i don't trust any one of you who are unmarried you will fall into haram you will pollute and fall into fasad if a person is unmarried no matter how much a person repents if he is unmarried says that the repentance of that individual also will not be perfect again he will fell into disobedience that repentance is not going to be stable and firm so without a wife your crying also will be will get nowhere so those who can get married and do not get married according to this hadith he says that they are cunning they are evil wicked wicked in the old sense not in the new new sense that we have or those who cannot get married yet they are rasulullah says they are sharir sharir meaning evil they are cunning and if they protect themselves he says they are afif they are good but that protection it's very tough importance of this marriage which rasulullah mentions he says in accordance to quran zuyyana lin nas hubb al shahawat that allah has adorned for you these desires now what are those desires it's the women it's the children it's the gold the silver the means of travel etc etc all these are the desires which he says are means of adornment for you for this dunya of yours or says that ma buniya fil islam bina an ahabbu ila allah azza wa jal aaz min at tazwij that in this deen of allah he says that before the almighty there is no facility which is better and more beloved much more dear than the wedlock when than marriage that is the best facility which allah talks about and one who marries worships he is fulfilling the divine order of allah and that is what rasulullah says that is the reason why i love women because um, a person who was married his worship is different his iman is different his faith is different so he automatically elevates just because of that wedlock or says that man nakaha lillah someone who gets married for the sake of allah wa ankaha lillah or makes others get married for the sake of allah that is a father striving to get his children married or someone who is well off he wants to help others get married or someone who can counsel mediate and get others married for them allah says istahaqqa wilayat allah this person deserves the wilayat of allah wilayat of allah means when allah becomes the custodian the wali of an individual allah hu waliyyul ladina amanu that is he becomes the wali he will take us out from zulumat from darkness into light just for that one tiny little good deed and that is getting married or getting others married allah says that much of reward is over there عن النبي says انه قال لو خرج العذاب من موتاكم الى الدنيا لتزوجوا says if allah resurrects all those who have died especially those who were single they were resurrected and brought back to life rasulullah says the first thing they will do is they will get married instantly immediately because they've seen what a person benefits and what a person has lost as a result of that remaining single so when rasulullah says that from this dunya of yours i love women it's because i hate to be single i love fragrance that again we talked about and salat inshallah if we get an opportunity that also will be mentioned it's the 8th of this month of muharram and the ashab of abu abdullah and husain they are mentioned and among them it's ali akbar the son of abu abdullah al husain alayhi salam who is in the service of the imam of his time which is his father who is imam al asr we too are waiting we have a master we have an imam and it's our wish that we also serve him we also uh, see him we also die in his service 
and our blood, whatever we possess, it's all given to him. One of the things we ought to give importance to, it's these teachings from Ahlul Bayt, especially du'as. We have to have some sort of association with these du'as. Because it's these du'as that help. If they become part and parcel of our existence, we will benefit. So we have some type of an attachment, we find that it remains with us. Just yesterday, a brother was mentioning over here that his relative is in, um, has had a stroke, forgotten everything, there's a total memory loss, but what he remembers, it's all these du'as and these surahs which he was acquainted with throughout his life. So that is the benefit of du'as, benefit of Qur'an. And that again results in reviving no matter what a person has lost. It helps. So one of these du'as, it's du'a ahd. Du'a ahd, it's that pledge of allegiance we have mentioned in the books of du'as. You have it in all different formats online. And that is associating with the imam. That is the imam of time. The more we recite these du'as, the more we are reminded that there is someone who we are associated, connected to. And in that du'a, if you come towards the end of it, we read that Allahumma inni ujaddidu lahu fi hadal yawm. That is Allah on this day. It is mustahab to recite it every morning after your fajr prayers. And there we say that Allahumma inni ujaddidu lahu. O oh God, I renew this allegiance with him wa fi kulli yawm and every day so it's an allegiance which we are renewing with him now again the other beautiful thing that we find over here it's that it's an allegiance to be renewed it means that somewhere we have signed this document or this agreement which is in place and we are renewing it every day so where did we sign that that is a question the answer to that is that before stepping into this world, in that test which we passed, as a result of which we are Shias today, and that goes back to that Alam Izzar, that is again another blessing that has been given to us, as a result of which we are tagged as the followers of Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam. So that agreement was signed by us, or we had extended that agreement to him in that alam, now we renew it in this world every day. That is, fi kulli yawm ahdan wa aqdan wa bay'atan fi raqabati. And then we come and say in the end of it that Allahumma arnit talat al rashida. That God make it as such that I see the visage of the Imam. Wal ghurrat al hamida. Wakhal nadiri bin nazratin minni ilayh. And beautify my eyes, and that is how will my eyes get beautiful by a sight at that Imam, by looking at that Imam. That is the beauty of my eyes. So, <clears throat> Ahlul Bayt they have taught us that we have to have this, um, these du'as in our daily performance. Being a friend of the Imam, again, it's the wish, it's a desire which the Ashab of Imam had. They served and they gave away their life. And it is again our wish, our desire that we also be in his service. There is this book called Siyahat al sharq written by Marhum Kuchani. He in that book mentions that when he has written about his own life after death in this book, that says that the day he passed away and the next day in Barza. That's his first day in Barza. He says that I was in Barza all alone and all of a sudden I see that there is someone, a delegation who has come to me and I've got my associate who he calls him as Hadi, who is the guide, who shows him the way around in Barza. Hadi comes and tells him that Kuchani, we've got some people who come, want to come and visit you. Says, who are they? Says, some of the Ashab of Abba Abdullah, they want to come and meet you. He's extremely happy that someone who is all alone in his barzakh, and it's his first day in the life after death, 
someone to come and visit specially of that high caliber extremely happy he says okay and then when they come says who is this says it's Habib ibn Mazahir that is the oldest member of the companions of Abba Abdullah extremely happy to see him and now says that Habib takes the charge Hadi is not there anymore Habib comes welcomes him into Barzakh and then says that says that I've got a message from you for you and that is from Zainab Kubra she has extended her salams to you and has said that all those services of yours they are all safe saved they will be paid back to you at the right time she says that all those crying of yours shedding tears discreetly for my brother everything is secure everything is safe he says that amidst this talk that I have with with Habib ibn Mazahir there I see that there are two young lads present in Barzakh and he says that they've got swords hanging round their waist he asks Habib that do you need ammunitions do you need to be armed here in Barzakh Habib says no you don't need to be armed now that one of them it's Ali Akbar the other one it's Abu al-Fazl al-Abbas says the reason why they are armed it's because they didn't get that opportunity to serve the Imam of their time that was Abu Abdullah al Hussein. they are equipped waiting in Barzakh for the Imam to return Imam al-Asr to return for them to return and serve the Imam when he comes to this dunya so that concept of waiting it's this and this whole concept has been defined in this dua at Allahumma in hala bayni wa baynahul maut that Allah if Imam returns and I have died says raise me resurrect me from my grave and as فَأَخْرِجْنِي مِنْ قَبْرِي مُؤْتَزِرًا كَفَنِي شَاهِرًا سَيْفِي مُجَرَّدًا قَنَاتِي with my sword available as my ammunition to serve the Imam looking into the performance of the those who've been waiting for the Imam there have been people who on Fridays they used to get equipped that is if Imam comes I'm ready to serve him or in Siyahat Ishar, uh, the same book I just quoted, Zay Marhum Najafi Qujani says that, that, that the call will be heard by everyone present in Barzakh. And those who, whose desire was reciting this dua and they recited it, and Imam also says that someone who had acquainted himself with this dua and if he recited for 40 days, and if death intervenes, Allah will raise him, resurrect him, and keep him among the servants of the Imam when he returns by the barakat of this dua. So that is again a reminder to us to associate, to have that inserted in our daily program. So dua ahd, the pledge of allegiance. During the time of Ma'sumin alayhim salam people they were after excuses for example Harsamat bin Salim one of these personalities that we can talk about who was present on the day of Ashura he when he sees now he is among the people of Yazid Umar Sa'd he sees that everything has unfolded and there he comes and says comes towards Abu Abdullah al Hussein and says I've come to tell you something says what is it says 30 years ago in the battle of Siffin I was here with your father and I was amazed to see his performance that when we when he came to this land that is this land of Karbala he asked us that we will be settling down sitting and staying here t uh, tonight and tomorrow we will start our journey continue with our journey and when we stopped by this land, your father, he stepped down, he kisses this earth and says that Says, lucky you, O land, this is where 
those caravans will settle down this is where those martyrs will shed their blood this is where those camps will be set up etc and then he says that all night he was in worship crying shedding tears Harsama says that I was reminded of this incident today on this day of Ashura that 30 years ago this is what we saw from your father Imam says okay now do you want to stay with me he says no I just came here to tell you this is what I was reminded I'm going back so people they existed they knew what right is what haq is they came to Abba Abdullah but they turned back but people of the end of time that is you and me living today away from the time of Prophet who haven't seen any of the Imams who haven't witnessed any of the Masumin for us our fourth Imam Sajjad alayhi salatu was salam <coughs> says that inna ahla zamana ghaybatihi that is people of the end of time that is the time of this ghaybat Al-qa'iluna bi imamatihi Those who have faith in the imamat of the imam Al-muntaziruna li zuhurih Those who are waiting for the imam Afdalu ahli kulli zaman Are the best of people of every time Now why is that? Li-anna allaha a'atahum min al-uquul wal-afham Wal-ma'rifa ma sarat bihil ghaybatu since Allah has given them this intellect as a result of which for them it doesn't matter whether the Imam is away or whether the Imam is present for that reason Rasulullah says that they are the best of people who ever existed in any time that is having faith in the Imam and we haven't seen the Imam and for that reason Rasulullah he says in one of these quotes twice he says to his own companions that Allahumma laqini ikhwati that Allah make me meet my brothers and when the ashab the companions say that Ya Rasulullah we are your brothers he says no you are my companions you are my ashab my companions are my brothers are the people of the end of time they are my brothers why does he say that? says that because they haven't seen me, they have faith in me. Alladina yu'minuna bil ghaib. Quran says they are those who have faith in the unseen. One of the names given to the Imam of time, it's Ghaib. Someone who is Ghaib. If you analyze this name Ghaib, no one possesses that name, it's only the Imam. So why does he need to be Ghaib? Does he not deserve to live freely like you and me? Why do we have to have those impositions on him, imposed ghaybat on him? Rivayat, they say that the reason why that ghaybat has been imposed on the Imam, it's because of our bad performance. In reality, in haqiqat, we have imposed ghaybat on the Imam. Now all 11 Imams were present because of the lazy Shias of that time that resulted in them being martyred one after the other and so that this Imam is safe he doesn't die Allah says that I will take him into hiding impose this ghaybat on him and when there are sufficient amount of mu'mineen to serve him he will be given back to you so ghaybat it's something which we have imposed on the Imam and riwayat they say that this ghaybat it will be delayed or extended so much until people they become better people or this time that we are living in it's this probation time for us to become better this teachings of Rasulullah the do's and the don'ts the ahkam wajibat muharramat we have to apply them on ourselves so much so that when the imam comes it's going to be easier for us to accept his commands if we are obedient to our mujtahid today, it will be easier for us to be obedient to the Imam tomorrow. If we do not obey our mujtahid, what he has said, out of a 500 ahkam which he has, he says, do these, we do two of them. So then tomorrow when Imam comes, definitely we won't be doing one of what he commands. So for us to be obedient to him, we have to train ourselves 
to be obedient to the mujtahid today, whoever we follow, whosoever in taqlid we are, then tomorrow we will be safe. Otherwise, it's going to be dangerous. Opposing Imam, standing against the Imam means hell, means Jahannam, means kufr. That is again our own devastation. Throughout our life, many opportunities come across. The Prophet, he says that utlubul khair, that is, وَتَعَرَّدُوا لِنَفَحَاتِ Allah, that there are breezes from Allah Taala throughout your life. And there is a lot hidden in it and you can benefit from them. For example, if it's hot and you turn on a fan, you stand in front of that fan, you will feel cold, you will benefit from that. If you turn on the air condition in your car and turn the vent towards your face, you will benefit from the cool of that AC. It says throughout your life, opportunities they come across. We don't know what they are, where they are. But we have to be smart to pick them and to select them and work on them. For example, if you look into the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, we find that many a times people, they ascend rapidly and many a times they descend, they have a head-on collision. So why and what happens that they ascend so quick? Among the, thing, the things that help us in this ascension is this majlis of Abba Abdullah. It's an overnight elevation that if someone sincerely comes to this majlis means that he has sincerely accepted Abba Abdullah, his teachings. That is that love which has dragged to this majlis and his teachings, when we apply those teachings in us, we become better people, better servants, better um, servitude, better worship. So that was a positive impact of that majlis. And again, the same thing is that sometimes we find opportunities, they come across in our life as a result of which we have a head-on collision, devastation. It says that, وَلَا تَرْمِي بِي رَمْيَ مَنْ سَقَتَ مِنْ عَيْنِ رِعَايَتِكَ Or other du'as, they say that, اللَّهُمَّ لَا تَكِلْنَا إِلَىٰ أَنفُسِنَا تَرْفَتَ عَيْنٍ أَبَدًا That Allah never make us rely on ourselves ever, not even for a moment. Because sometimes when we become proud and we rely on our own self for that one moment, that one moment will devastate us, which will ruin us. Umm Salama, she comes and asks Rasulullah, that Ya Rasulullah, you are a great person, the best from among the creation, Habibullah. And then he, she says that, do you ever repent? Do you ever perform tawbah? Say Astaghfirullah. Rasulullah says, my brother Yunus, for just one moment, he, he became ghafil, and that devastation comes into his life. What happens to Prophet Yunus? We all know that he was punished in the, sh in the fish for 30 years. The reason for that punishment was that he invites his people and no one, he was among those unsuccessful prophets whose invitation wasn't um, successful. So no one had faith or very little had faith in him. So he says, God, I've done my duty. Nothing can be done in this nation. They cannot be corrected. So what do I do? Okay, I'll send an azab, a chastisement, a punishment on them. So there is a scheduled punishment to arrive to this nation. For example, Sunday at 4 o'clock. That is what Allah says. Now what Prophet Yunus says that now that everything has been confirmed and that azab is to come, so there's no point in me staying over here. I'll leave. He packed up and he went away from that land. As a result of that, Allah punished him. He says, you are waliyullah and you have to be in that nation just before, until just before that azab is to come. If the azab is to come at 4 o'clock, you should be there at least by, till quarter to 4, 15 minutes to 4, and then you can leave. How come you left in the morning? Had you stayed there in that land, maybe someone wanted to repent, wanted to perform tawbah. He says that waliyullah has to be present there. Because you left that place, as a result of that leaving, you will be punished for 30 years. 30 years, in a tough time and in that stomach of that fish. Now we find this in Quran. Says that was fil kitab Ibrahim. Remember Ibrahim. Innahu kana Siddiqan Nabiya. He was one of the trustworthy 
prophets was kurfil kitab musa innahu kana mukhlasan wa kana rasulan nabiyya remember musa he was so sincere says was kurfil kitab ismail remember ismail innahu kana sadiq al waad he was whatever he promised he was truthful to it wa kana rasulan nabiyya was kurfil kitab idris innahu kana siddiq al nabiyya remember idris remember ismail remember Musa remember Ibrahim remember all of them but then says fasbir li hukmi rabbik wa la takun ka sahib hud says to the prophet be like them remember them but never be like yunus yunus is among the great prophets of allah says don't be like him why ka sahib al hud is nada wa huwa magzum that when he the reason for allah saying to the prophet not to be like prophet yunus don't make haste don't leave behind your nation as a result of which when that chastisement was to pour down and if someone wanted to return to god wanted to repent that opportunity of repentance was shut and closed for those people so <clears throat> repentance is there and we shouldn't be uh, that these opportunities which we which come across in our life we have to avail those opportunities benefit from those opportunities So the wrong that we do in our day to day life it increases the distance between us and Allah and for that again we find the teachings that um ma'sumin they have they say for example our fourth imam he in his sahih e sajjadiyah says that god when i look at my performance at these sins that i have done i just get devastated wa idha ra'aytu maulaya dhunubi faz'at i just get devastated imam masoom someone who does not commit any sins why does he say that when it comes to servitude and worship of allah jalla wala no matter how high a person gets in this field he finds that he is very weak he is very low and the performance which he has it's not going to benefit wastaghfiruk ya min kulli lazzatin bighayri zikrik imam says that even if i enjoyed something and if i find that in that joy of mine you do not exist that is allah does not exist says that that is a sin that i have committed and i need to repent i need to ask you to forgive me so that is how delicate people they get as they get higher in this field wa min kulli rahatin bighayri unsik and if i got tired and i relaxed imam says in that relaxing of mine if allah did not exist that is a sin that i have committed and for that sin i need to repent zahar che ghayr yar astaghfirullah zabud mustaar astaghfirullah from everything but you my friend astaghfirullah from every fake existence astaghfirullah dami kan bugzarad bi yaad ruyash az an dam bi shumar astaghfirullah that moment which passes without me remembering him in that moment says from that moment also i have to repent i have to say astaghfirullah saramad umru yak saat z ghaflat nagashtam hu shiyar astaghfirullah that is my life it ended a duration of ghaflat that is this entire life of mine was in ghaflat I did not learn anything I did not improve myself astaghfirullah nakardam yak sujudi dar hame umr ke ayat on bekar astaghfirullah throughout my life I did not bow down and did not perform one sajda which could benefit me astaghfirullah zikr dar badam sad bar tauba ze guftar hazar astaghfirullah by this bad attitude of mine a hundred times i have to repent and all this bad mouth and bad words of mine a thousand astaghfirullah so for this reason prophet yunus he was punished because he did not stay in that town so that people could benefit for that quran says fanada fi zulmat an la ilaha illa ant subhanaka inni kuntu minaz zalimin the prophet you know said i've done wrong god when he sincerely repented he was freed from that fish 
This is the performance of Prophet Yunus. He did wrong, he admits that he has done wrong, and his repentance. Now this repentance, when we say, it's tarki awla, that is someone of that great caliber like Prophet Yunus, Allah says that he should be there, he should have been present in that town for people to repent. But the attitude of shaitan, on the contrary, shaitan, when Allah says, bow down in sajda before Adam, he does not. And he is adamant, he's arrogant, says that, فَمَا فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأَقُدَنَّ لَهُمْ سِرَاتَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ That is, God, now that you driv you've driven me away from your presence, I will sit amidst the path and I will mislead and misguide everyone from your right path. So that is that attitude of shaitan and that was that attitude of waliyullah that when he, when he has done wrong, he repents. So repentance, it's one of those beautiful qualities that we find for ma'sumin, uh, for mu'mineen, taught by ma'sumin alayhim salam that is that best way when a person, he can come back to Allah, no matter how much wrong that we have done. And these nights are the nights for us to return. Tonight, <coughs> in that quote, we find says that Benafsi al Hussein al Mutawaffa al Muhtadar al Maktul al Mazbuh al Manhur al Masmum al Makrub. That is, Abu Abdullah al Hussein, he saw all these variety of deaths on that one day. A person, he may just get, fell ill and die. Maybe shot, he dies. Maybe he is ill, he dies. Maybe of distress, stress, stroke, something. One of these deaths. But we find for Abba Abdullah that a variety of deaths are present. He died of thirst. He died of that poisonous spear that was shot. He was beheaded. He was poisoned. He was wounded. And in that quote says that there wasn't a part in the body of Abu Abdullah when Rasulullah if he wanted to kiss could kiss so it was all wounded head to toe when it comes to tests we find in Quran says that وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ that sometimes when Allah wants to test an individual he, the term used is bishay. Bishay means a bit of a fear. Bishay min al khawf, a little fear, a little fright, a little poverty, a little hunger, a little thirst, a little seizing away of wealth and property, or sometimes death. But for Abu Abdullah, it wasn't bishay, it was a lot, in abundance, every affliction in abundance. That is, we find that khawf, that fear, it was a day of horror from all sides. Jew hunger, that again was to the max. Thirst in addition to it. Everything which they possessed was seized away. Every soul which was with them was taken away, was killed. So all those male members who were with Abu Abdullah, his children, his brothers, Bani Hashim, his Ashab, all of them perished in less than half a day. So that is not bishay, but a lot. When it comes to masaib, Quran says that إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُسِيبًا قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ They say that we've come from Allah and we return to Allah. For Prophet Ibrahim, we find that Quran says إِنَّا وَجَدْنَاهُ صَابِرًا نِعْمَ الْعَبْدِ إِنَّهُ أَوَّاب He was patient. The Prophet again we find in Nikil Ala Khulqin Azim. That is, Allah elevated the rank of the Prophet so high, so lofty, that there wasn't anyone second to the Prophet in this performance, in this akhlaq. Ali Akbar alayhi salam is the son of Abu Abdullah. Mother is Layla. And his looks. The definitions that we have in Riwayat says that Ashbahu nas khalqan wa khulqan to the Prophet. There wasn't anyone like him. 
the most resemblance in features, the most resemblance in attitude, in akhlaq to the Prophet was Ali Akbar. In might, in bravery, the most strong, like Amir al Mu'mineen. So much so that one of the reporters, he says that in one of the meetings, Muawiyah, he once, when his people were present, there he says that who would be the best successor for me after me? Those who flattered him say that we don't want a successor, we want you to live until the day of judgment and you just rule and no one else. Some said this person, that person, Yazid, so on and so forth. He says that no, none. If someone is rightful to be a successor for this hukuma, there is no one better than Ali Akbar. His might, his bravery, his beauty, the way he handles the affairs, so on and so forth, he is the best. When this caravan arrives, Karbala, here Ali Akbar says, Aba Abdullah, he has a little nap. He gets up and he says that, I had a dream, it's just horror that it's going to, that it's going to unfold over here. I smell death. Ali Akbar, he says that, Awalasna bil haq. That is, are we not al haq? Are we not on the right? In reply, Imam says, Jazakallah min waladin khayra ma jaza an walideh. That the best of rewards a father can give be given to Ali Akbar. Quran, when it talks about the test which Prophet Ibrahim gives, says that. Prophet Ibrahim is instructed to take his son Ismail to behead him. He says that when I take that knife and I want to slaughter Ibrahim, Ismail, that knife wouldn't do the job, wouldn't cut. He tries and tries and tries, it doesn't work. Takes the knife, hits it onto a nearby rock present, and that knife starts speaking. Says that Al Khalil Ya'muruni Wal Jalil Yanhani. That Khalil, which is Ibrahim, instructing me to cut Jalil, which is Allah the Glorious, says, no, you shouldn't cut. Says, because this sacrifice has to remain, so that Hussein has to give that sacrifice. From the progeny of Ismail, Hussein has to come into existence, so that that sacrifice is given. When everything unfolds on that day, from among the children of Abba Abdullah, Ali Akbar is the first one who steps towards the battlefield, fights, and there, when he falls from the horse, says, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'oon. There is no one that is just Allah Jalla wa'ala. When he falls from the horse, Amidst the fight, he says, Abata al Atash Katalani. Father, this thirst is just killing me. Is there any way that this thirst can be quenched? Imam shows his tongue and says that look at my tongue, Ali Akbar. It's even much more thirstier than yours. Because for Abba Abdullah, he is the first one who starts the day and the last one who ends. And it wasn't just such that he just sat and looked. No, serving throughout the day, bringing all the bodies back to the camps. So he strived and he served the most. <laughs> Ali Akbar fell to the ground. And there, Imam, he also comes, brings the body, lays him by the other bodies present. For Ali Akbar, Alayhi salam, Imam, when Zainab al Kubra sees that Imam has come towards the camp, she just takes the body in and sends the Imam back. Because Imam, if he was to see the body for a longer time, after all, he's the father. He's going to break down. She doesn't want the Imam to break even for that little while. She just takes the body and says, You go back. Takes charge. رفتار تو با من خداوند کریم آن از که بود با مسیحا و کلیم گویی 
ندیده ای گناهی از من از بس که رحیمی و غفوری و حلیم گر برانی ور بخانی زین درم غیر از این نیست جای دگرم خانت را حلق بر در میزنم گرد بام خانت پر میزنم بار لاها بر درت روی سیاها وردم بار لاها بر درت روی سیاها وردم عمر از کف رفته و بار گناه آوردم راه تاریک از تو لیکن آیه لا تقن تو روشنی با خود من گم کرد راه آوردم او ملاد with a face all darkened unto you it's me I've come with the life of all ill evil heart but broken hunched and shaken I have come heart but broken hunched and shaken I have come path is dark but hope abundant and with this hope it's me I've come my light to my goal is all my hope and with this gem to you I've come bar ilaha bar darat ruy siyah awardam umr az kaf rafte wo bar gunah awardam ala la'natullah ala alqawm alzalimin وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمن وجب له حق علينا ولمن وصانا بالدعاء ولجميع أمة محمد وآل محمد All those who are ill and ailing Ya Allah grant them shifa All those who have passed away elevate their ranks and list us among the true supporters and the servants of the Imam of Time. May Allah grant Islam and Muslimin the dignity and honor and defame kuffar, munafiqeen and mushrikeen. Wa'ajjil fi faraj mawlana sahib al-zaman, Matam-e-Hussain.